Okay, perfect. Um, we have Diane Levine, uh, our, the executive director for the IFLA Foundation. She's my counterpart. She's really been active across across the state and you know the world in the, their global workforce initiative on uh, making FM a career choice for uh, new and incumbent workers and students. And then we have Christian Plekia, who is the Silicon Valley IFMA president and works for Slater Construction. And he is the instructor at the College of San Mateo for our Essentials of Facilities Management course at the two program course certificate program we started last year at College of San Mateo. So, you know, we're really happy to go into some discussion on what the facilities management talent pipeline is, where we've come, um, where we're at, what we expect in the future, even with COVID, with the online instruction, and then also, um, you know, answer any questions um, for you out there on any, on any programs as we go into this year of COVID and most of the instruction being online. The EOFM course is nicely pos positioned to scale across a lot of campuses. We, you know, are kind of putting the finishing touches on how we're going to do that and where. Um, so we will start, I guess, with the video, if we can, on what uh, FM career is like. Yeah. So Brad, if you could play that first. I'm, I'm scrambling here, Carlos. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> so let's see, we have a good amount of people on the call today. Good. Here we go. search indeed.com for facility manager jobs in the Bay Area, you're likely to see several thousand postings. It's a really high demand job, one that typically offers more than a dozen openings for every person who earns a degree or certificate in facility management. And the median wage in California is $91,000. Facility management is all about commercial buildings, skyscrapers, campuses, office parks, even airports, hospitals, and hotels. California is home to more than 10 billion square feet. Think of a commercial building as a multi-million dollar asset, a productive environment that contributes to the economy, a living, breathing system loaded with software controlled technology, an opportunity for sustainability and pollution reduction. The goal of the facility manager is to use data to drive better decisions. From systems, from control mechanisms, the average building can bring over 200,000 data points of delivery an average year. I have the opportunity to bring some of the most innovative buildings in the world to life. Facility managers are at the center of commercial buildings. You probably figured out already that they manage the technical and custodial staff. But really, their job is focused on the business of managing buildings, increasing asset value, balancing revenue and costs, planning and managing capital improvements, providing a safe work environment, solving problems on a daily basis. They are the heartbeat, engaging everyone associated with the building. The building owners, tenants, technical staff, architects, engineers, contractors. It's a job that requires a broad range of financial, management, and technical skills. Facility managers are leaders. The facility manager not only to develop a safe and productive work environment, they also need to be mindful of business operations, budget acumen, financial acumen. The facility manager is essentially the CEO of all those uh, services. The good news is that facility management is a career, not just a job, and the entry points His career are wide and diverse. Starting positions can be in the facility management department or data disciplines such as purchasing, accounting, engineering, or operations. Pathways into facility management follow 11 well-defined core competencies, most of which are found in business degree programs. Do you need a four-year degree? No, typically. Fully competent facility manager will have 10 years of education and experience. So an associate's degree in business is an excellent long point from which to start a 
technology management career. The ratio of job openings to completers in our area is approximately 30 to 1 right now. The students that go through this program are pretty much guaranteed a job when they come. This program can be completed quite quickly. We're looking at about a year and a half, 16 to 18 units in their internship, which is real world experience through our cooperative education. California community colleges are the ideal place to get training in facility management. that easy. Prepare yourself for a career in facility management by enrolling in a community college program. Thanks, Thanks Brad. A uh, little bit of a delay, but I think everyone got sort of the overview of what a FM career is. Uh, we created that a few years back and in trying to, from a really high level, give you a snapshot of what some of the um, leaders in the industry are doing their perspective, what a FM career is and the companies that they've worked for. Now what we're trying to do, and we'll show you later on after a little bit of the presentation and the, you know, both Diane and Christian speak about what they're working on and their involvement is uh, we're trying to focus more on different groups within the community colleges and out in, in the world, you know, whether they're female, individuals that are undecided business students or architectural majors or K through 12. There are some pretty cool things that we're doing, uh, not only uh, throughout the Bay Area that uh, Diane is doing across the U.S. So uh, I'd like to introduce Diane Levine, the Executive Director for the IFMA Foundation, and take it away, Diane. Thank you, Carlos. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today to talk about uh, the field of facility management. Um, in the last year, there were 6,500 openings in facility management in California in 2019. The average facility manager is 49 years old, and in five to 15 years, half of them are going to ret retire. You know, most of them are in their 60s. Um, what I love about facility management, just to give you a little bit of my background, I was a director of facility management for over 25 years in both public agencies and healthcare. You know, it's a really well paid position, and it's there's plenty of opportunities. It's creative. It's different every day. You can choose any industry. You can be global if you want to. Choose any country. There's a wide range of responsibilities, and I think it's a really exciting career. It's a very broad field, so there's a lot of different avenues that you can choose. Um, the IFMA Foundation, uh, we've been in existence for 30 years. We're the charitable arm of IFMA, and our whole mission is to make facility management a career of choice. And for the last 24 years, we've been the global accrediting body for facility management degrees. So you can get an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's degree in FM. And the students um, coming out of these programs, there's nearly 100% job placement rate, as you've learned in the video. And, you know, it, I can't stress enough how well paid this position is and it cannot be offshored. You, you know, the building has to be managed by somebody within the building. The facility management industry is a 1.1 trillion global industry and it represents 5% of the economy. And there are 25 million facility management practitioners worldwide. This is a, a career pathway map for the field of facility management. You'll see the average USA salary range at the bottom. This is average in the US. The average facility manager in California, that's at the manager level, not associate director or director, uh, is $91,000. So you can enter this field in many different ways. I myself uh, just found it by accident. I had a music and a business degree. Uh, before I entered facility management. Um, however, there's a lot of folks that come in through the trades or through engineering, architecture, construction management. Uh, again, it's a very broad field, so there's, very, there's a lot of different avenues to, to enter. 
The International Facility Management Association um, is the world's largest professional association. There's over 24,000 members. We're in 105 countries. We have over 138 chapters around the globe. And it is IFMA that creates the credentials and certifications for um, for facility management and there's there's different levels and Christian's going to talk to you about uh, one certificate that we're teaching at the California Community Colleges. Uh, the IFMA Foundation, our organization, uh, not only uh, has the accredited degree programs but we also provide scholarships so students studying facility management in the California Community Colleges are eligible for our scholarships. We give away about $120,000 worth of scholarships each year to anywhere from 20 to 30 students. And the students receiving our scholarships are able to get an all expense paid trip to our IFMA World Workplace Conference, where they participate in an Ignite FM student challenge, working in teams with students from around the world, uh, as well as get to network and meet with facility managers and meet with our global workforce initiative advisors who are the major facility management outsourcing firms and they can meet with their recruiters and interview for jobs. We also have a job net and an intern net for students and um, we have a, a job shadowing program as well called a day in the life of a facility manager. I'm going to turn it over to Christian to talk about the talent development pipeline programs that we created with the California Community Colleges. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Christian Pelecchia. I teach the Essentials of Facility Management at the College of San Mateo in Northern California, uh, Silicon Valley area. And uh, we developed a very robust program. Uh, you can keep this relatively simple, but I like to show the potential of what you can do with, uh, with, a, with a simple program such as this. Uh, California has one of the highest concentrations of facility related positions in the world, yet there are zero colleges that offer a bachelor's or a master's degree in facility management throughout the whole state. Uh, as was alluded to earlier, the built environment is evolving at a rapid pace and buildings are far more complex than they've ever been. When you couple that with the lack of qualified workforce entering into the FM profession, we are at risk of having poorly managed buildings. Some of the effects of poorly managed buildings can cause at least three detrimental situations which can have an effect on everyone in the world. First, health and safety. 87% of our lives are spent indoors. Another 6% is spent in automobiles. Uh, one third of our lives are spent at work. The average person will spend 90,000 hours at work over a lifetime. <laughs> Therefore, if we are spending a majority of our time indoors, then poorly managed buildings may have a profound effect on our overall health and well-being. Second, the environment. Buildings in and of themselves have a net negative effect on our environment, but Poorly managed buildings have an even far more devastating effect on the environment. FMs are no longer just building managers, they are also environmental stewards. Third, the bottom line, poorly managed buildings can have a profound effect on how we do business, severely impacting local, national, and global economies. Therefore, poorly managed buildings have an either a direct or an indirect effect on everyone in the world. And that is why building management is such an important problem for all of us. In turn, IFMA Silicon Valley has been working very closely with the GWA Global Workforce Initiative to help educate the next generation of facility management professionals. I have a tendency to overdo things and uh, therefore we, we created a very robust program. Since our chapter is located in Silicon Valley, we are one of the largest chapters of the world and we are able to utilize a wide array of resources to enhance this program. As you can see, our students will receive a certificate of completion from IFMA, but they will also uh, be encouraged to complete their associate's degree in business uh, plus internships or jobs. Uh, we do not guarantee them in, an internship or job, but we guarantee them the opportunity to apply for them. Uh, we do this in the following ways. First, we make it mandatory that they attend at least three chapter meetings during the, the course of the semester. Uh, our chapter meetings are quite large. We usually have up to 120 members attending regularly, and our topics usually cover some of the most cutting edge issues within facility management. The majority of the members that attend chapter meetings are potential employers for the students, and the students get to the opportunity to network with them. Second, we dedicate at least one three-hour class in covering the importance of networking, resume writing, and soft skills. A few of the chapter's FMs review the resumes and provide feedback 
And after every chapter meeting, when we begin the next scheduled class, we go around the room asking the students for uh, some of the highlights of that evening. Next slide, please. Oops. A majority of our classes are taught by guest instructors who each volunteer to teach at least one of the modules that you see before you. This provides the students with a wide scope of what the profession is about. These guest instructors include representatives from tech, medical, industrial, hospitality, and even uh, outsourcing companies such as Christian and Wakefield, JLL, CBRE, and the like. And each of them provide a different flavor of what the FM profession is like. Next slide, please. Finally, as the semester nears the end, we assist all of the students in looking for internships or jobs in the area. For example, our first class in 2019 had 24 students. Only 11 of them were seeking employment at that time, and all 11 received full-time employment. Plus, one student received uh, an IFMA-related scholarship to continue his pursuit in uh, facility management. <clears throat> in closing, this program has reinvigorated our chapter people are participating more and they're more excited to participate. Uh, it made, this, this course helped make, made us more relevant within our community. Companies are looking to us for, uh, for potential employees before they, they go to indeed.com. And uh, not only are we creating awareness of the FM profession, but we're also creating awareness of IFMA in general and how they help facility management professionals. This is a worthy and exciting venture ultimately making the world a better place to live and work. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christian. And Christian is one of our industry leaders that really brings such a, a great enthusiasm and high level of experience and networking with, you know, companies, the who's who's in Silicon Valley. You know, his chapter is one of the largest and most, I think, well-known chapters in the world, if not only in the California, United States, but in the world. So we're really happy to have Christian leading teaching this course and being part of our uh, FM talent pipeline. And if we could, and thank you so much, Christian, and at any time, please jump in with any anecdotal information because there's so much um, happening in the career of FM and especially now during COVID, I know we, some, we have some great anecdotal, some, you know, stories about why FM is a career, you know, that is not only recession proof, it's pandemic proof. And, um, you know, some of these stories are really important as we convey this message to not only K through 12, but the students in our community colleges or incumbent workers that want a lateral career. If we could, Brad, can we tee up the um, video that we created for the uh, students that were taking the FM course at College of San Mateo? Apologize. This is one of those videos where we we felt okay. Having a little bit of a technical glitch here. I, I can not sure if most. Sorry, of, is that volume still low? Yes. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let me. Uh, I have one one other adjustment to make. Hold on. I'm going to stop sharing and then restart. So this was one of those videos where, you know, it's such a heavily male dominated um, career and industry with FM facility managers. We wanted to reach out to some of the female students and individuals that are pursuing an FM career and, um, you know, start to target those individuals uh, within the different programs, whether they're, you know, business. Now we're looking into architectural uh, any of the accounting or finance programs or sustainable programs. You know, we have a wide reach. And um, actually, Diane, if you want to spend a minute or two, I don't know if this is, you know, while we're waiting for. I'm, I'm ready. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry about that. I could talk all day long. <laughs> What brought me to College of San Mateo is the facility management program and the project management program. Not only is it a booming field, but there's so many job prospects in the Bay Area. I've always been interested in the built environment, primarily through a sustainability lens. A vast majority 
of our world is built already and we need people to manage those buildings otherwise they're going to fall apart and those buildings span across every industry from healthcare to higher ed to different areas of the private sector. I was a facility manager at Stanford University. I was in my first year on the job and was just looking for professional development and CSM was one of the only colleges that I found that offered the facility management course. I wasn't necessarily looking for a big program but I wanted to take the class. I am a student at the College of San Mateo doing project management as well as facilities management. I've been attending school part-time as I work full-time and I've been doing my classes in the evening, taking roughly two classes per semester. And I had never worked in anything that had to do with construction or facilities management and it opened so many doors where I was able to see how buildings were being built, how they're maintaining them, the technology that's used in them. The current flow of facility managers are retiring. And not only that, all the buildings now being built are technologically way more advanced. They need the next generation of facility managers to be trained on how to run buildings and facilities using the latest technology. With project management, you can go into pretty much any industry you want. Every industry needs facility managers to manage the buildings. What facility management taught me was to talk to different types of folks with different types of backgrounds and expertise. The contacts that I was able to make through the course led me to the job I currently have right now. We've been encouraged to participate in the IFMA, International Facilities Management Association, and it opens up opportunities for us to network and learn of different companies that are hiring. I definitely encourage people that have to work full time, that are looking to change their careers or add on to their education, return to school and come to College of San Mateo because there's so many opportunities there. I will, this is James, I'll say before we move forward, uh, if, the, if the video was choppy or the sound wasn't coming through for whatever reason, these videos are also uh, uploaded onto the ecusector.com website uh, on the resource page. So um, uh, we're on under initiative. So go ahead and go online if you want to rewatch it or download it yourself if you'd like. Go ahead, Carlos. Okay, great. That, that's a great video. And, you know, we're really focusing now on some different groups to attract and draw those students and individuals that would have, wouldn't have normally been interested or aren't in the field currently. So uh, a question came in, and, um, and this is sort of for our group. Does IFMA have special focus area for one, green buildings and renewable energy generation, and two, for the new clean room requirements, both clean room and industrial facilities, as well as now pandemic clean room in schools, colleges, and commercial facilities? So um, between Diane, uh, Christian and myself, who would like to answer number one for the green I, buildings generation? I can answer that. Okay. So IFMA has, a, IFMA has a, I think, 17 or 18 communities of practice and, and uh, councils, and sustainability is one of those. Um, the IFMA Foundation also provides research and publications in this topic. Uh, we created the sustainability how-to guides and sustainability is part of the education within uh, facility management. But we also just published in April a pandemic manual for facility professionals and I can send you all the link to that. It's free uh, to anyone off of our website and um, it's, it's interesting the pandemic has actually um, garnered more interest in the field of facility management and actually has put us to the forefront whereas in the past we've been kind of the the career behind the scenes, um, we were getting a lot more attention with the pandemic and there, in this pandemic manual is in is our resources, uh, checklists, strategic plans, et cetera, for, uh, for pandemic planning. Uh, and as well as uh, we have lots of resources within IFMA weekly, we have uh, webinars on things like clean rooms, uh, cleaning and any all kinds of issues dealing with pandemic uh, and planning buildings, space management, etc. And those webinars are available to you uh, to view 
off of IFMA's website, so I can send you that information as well. Great, thank you, Diane. I would, and um, I would only on like to add the, uh, the um, SFP credential. Oh, that's right. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about that, Christian? No, no, go ahead. I just want to. So, how could I forget? Um, <laughs> it's incredible. It's, it's an incredible course. So IFMA has a sustainability facility professional certification and uh, that's available to anyone interested in the certification. There are no pre-requirements to taking the coursework. And specifically about clean rooms, I'm sure there's different groups. They have, you know, um, a couple different chat groups to where professionals will weigh in on clean room requirements. But um, to your knowledge, Christian or Diane, is there a specific clean room group that they can reference or is it more of the chat room sort of? It, it's more in the chat rooms and in the resources. Um, we do have a specific chat room just for facility managers only uh, that are IFMA members that can share information uh, amongst each other. We also have a partnership with ISSA, which is a cleaning uh, professional association as well that uh, we use and share resources with them. Right, great. Okay, um, we'll take another minute or two for questions here since they're coming in. Uh, there was a question that came in about, I'd like to comment on Christian's first FM class at the College of San Mateo. It was great. Uh, um, it says, I am was a great instructor and in current FM, FAE Association of Facility Engineer Academic Ambassador to the local colleges. So a little unclear, but um, I guess it's a comment that they thought Chris, Christian was great. <laughs> hey, Carlos, can, this is Stan. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, this, uh, I posted this, um, this comment, and um, I just wanted to share, share my remarks of Christian's um, first course at the College of San Mateo. By the way, uh, I was um, an invited guest speaker on one particular topic, but, but in general, my background is I'm a professional um, facility engineer, and I um, have been doing uh, college outreach with the local uh, universities, four-year universities, uh, for over 10 years now. And it's given me an opportunity to, oh, by the way, I was an IFMA member back in the day in college, but um, it's my recent role working with the students for over 10 years, telling them about the careers in facility engineering and, and management has um, shared with me there is a, a big gap. And give back, uh, the gap is that the students want to know more about the FM roles and careers and they're just not out there. And I think this program is a great opportunity to feed that need because it's definitely there. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I just want to share this with the group that this is a great mission and I want to be there to support whatever uh, I can and my um, other colleagues that I weren't able to make this call. Thanks, Dan. And you brought up something that's so important. Integrating the technical side in FM career training is really important. We're mm -hmm. trying to look at the best ways to bring in speakers, to have immersive types of uh, program training. We did some contract ed training with the Google FM leaders uh, earlier in the year. And as part of that, we brought them on a couple building tours that, you know, these are individuals that have been in the FM field at Google for a while, and they've never seen what an HVAC system looks like or a pumping system or a chiller, you know, so we went into some details. So there's some context to what these calls are coming in or how their environment and building works or and or is designed. So it's a really important aspect of FM training and we're really trying to see how best to integrate more of these technical skills. So uh, before we go to another question, I think I'd like to, Diane, if you're okay, finish the presentation mm -hmm. and then we'll hit, with, hit, uh, hit on a couple questions and some other specific things about facilities management. I think that would be really important for the group. And if I could ask the group to, uh, I should have asked this earlier, I apologize, just to put your name in the chat box, uh, you know, your college, where you're from, and uh, that would be great. So we have some follow through with who all is on the call. So thank you. Go ahead, Diane. So I just wanted to say we started, uh, this California Talent Development Pipeline Program at Chafee College. Uh, we began in September of 2017. 
Then two years later, Christian uh, College started the program at College of San Mateo back in January of 2019. And then in September of 2019, we started the program at West Los Angeles College. Uh, West LA College started as a no credit program and they're now working towards credit. Uh, Chafee and College of San Mateo are both uh, credit programs. Um, and with Chafee program, there is a mandatory internship of 70 hours, uh, however, not at the College of San Mateo, as Christian said. So that's, that's an option. But all of these programs are teaching the IFMA Essentials of Facility Management, and that's a globally recognized certificate um, that can be used anywhere. When we started the program at Chafee College in 2017, we established a student chapter there because there was a very small local chapter in the Inland Empire. And the student chapter has 40 members. Uh, this is a picture of uh, some professors and the, along with the student chapter at Chafee College. This chapter in 2019, after only being in existence for less than two years, won the IFMA Global Student Chapter of the Year Award. Um, they have an incredible website and it's an incredible uh, group of gifted students. Uh, they actually beat out schools like Brigham Young University, Florida A&M, Pratt, Ferris State, Hong Kong Polytechnic, Hansa University in the Netherlands, and so on. So uh, we're just very, very proud of, of their success. And, and uh, they had a lot of great mentors from the local IFMA chapters in Orange County and San Fernando Valley and San Diego and the Inland Empire. And uh, so this is one of a great achievements. They're actually just applied for chapter of the year for 2020. So I hope they get it. Um, this is a story about one of our first students that graduated from the program, Elizabeth Zamora. She had her mandatory internship at ABM, which is a major facility management outsourcing firm, and one of our global partners and global initiative uh, advisors. Uh, she met one of our trustees and he encouraged her to apply for an internship at ABM. And this is an excerpt from a letter that she sent to him, uh, just saying how grateful she was. But she, after, after her internship, ABM hired her, and through her coursework, she learned how to find cost savings measures. She started telling all of the managers at ABM how they could save money uh, with their projects. And her manager basically said, well, why don't you teach a class on cost savings and facility management to the managers at ABM? And she did, and he said, why don't I just make you a manager? And he did. So she is now in a year from her internship went from intern to ABM operations manager. And Christian touched on how the local chapters support programs at the community colleges. We've got, I, I can't remember how many chapters in California, I think 11 chapters. And they're ready and eager to support programs as you can see with Chafee College and the College of San Mateo. And it's the chapters that fund our scholarships, help find internships. They can actually uh, have local Ignite FM student competitions between your school and the core and the, and the students. Uh, we can set up job shadowing programs for a day with a facility manager. Uh, there's lots of support from the student chapters and they can also help sponsor career events. And if you're in need of instructors, there's, uh, we do have certified instructors uh, within IFMA and within these chapters that can also help support your programs. And that's it. Okay, great. Um, I wanted to go to a couple questions now. One of the questions Daryl Soros had answered is, or I'm sorry, uh, asked was, is the curriculum the same across all three colleges? Earlier I heard or mention of accreditation as if I'm a accrediting organization. So I could speak to the programs. They are, as far as the essentials of facilities management, that is a course that's being taught by an instructor and that's from IFMA. They do it a little bit differently. And for Chafee as in, um, College of San Mateo and West LA College, they add one or two other classes to them to provide a certificate of completion. 
and it may be project management or West LA is providing a little different course uh, with that, but there is also a project management. So while the courses are a little bit different in the program for the most part they use the EOFM course and and or project management course and do you want to speak to the accreditation portion sure. can you can you repeat the accreditation question is IFMA the accrediting organization yes we are um, we are the global accrediting body and we are also a member society within ABIT uh, the accrediting body of engineering and technology. So we fall under the ANSAC Applied and Natural Sciences uh, under ABET. We set the standards and uh, the ABET team, uh, we actually uh, provide the program evaluators and ABET manages the process. Great. You know, I wanted to make a mention too, uh, and I think this would uh, probably lead us to a conversation about K through 12, which is really important. Diane has some information on what she's doing at a couple different spots, what a IFMA member had created in what is called the Ambassador Toolkit, and something that I've already uh, gave presentations at three different Office of Educations, uh, High School Office of Educations this year. And then I'd like to have Christian talk about what he's working on with some of the programs in attracting K through 12 and underserved communities with uh, or in the FM career. So Diane, if you wouldn't mind mentioning what you're doing at, uh, in Denver. Sure, so we've, um, we've been working with the Denver Economic Development and Opportunity Department. We actually had a grant with them to provide the essentials of facility management along with a job shadowing program, an internship program, and an Ignite FM student competition. Um, and we've been very, very successful with them. 100% of the students were minorities, 50% veterans, and 50% women. Uh, the students are now entering their internship program. And uh, we worked again locally with the local IFMA Denver chapter uh, on this project, and it's been uh, a great success. Uh, as Carlos said, we, um, we have this ambassador kit, so we've got uh, lots of tools in our toolbox to help you market your programs, your facility management degree programs. And uh, we do it in, in lots of different ways. Uh, the chapter members locally can help promote the program at local high schools or at your college. We have pizza parties with students uh, where we have a whole session with facility managers explaining the field. So uh, I think we're, we're getting really great at marketing programs. Uh, I think the average number of students in, in these three colleges is 25, 20 to 25 per class. Some of them have gone over 30. Right, we have great interest. Uh, mm -hmm. We're working on more of the online and the delivery and just, you know, every program's a little different. And Christian, if you wouldn't mind speaking about some of the K through 12 high school out or out outreach that you've explained to me and some of the national competition programs. Yes, um, so we're, uh, our high school programs are kind of in the works, but what have, you know, one of the biggest problems with uh, facility management in general is a, a lack of awareness of the profession. That's the reason why there's a shortage of a workforce. It's just not a popular name. People know about doctors, lawyers, and things like police and fire, but uh, rarely does the facility management profession uh, come up in conversations. So uh, one of the biggest problems is awareness. So what we're trying to do is create awareness as, as wide breath as we can. And there was two programs that kind of fell in our laps that, uh, uh, that we're pushing right now. One is um, Skills USA. Skills USA is a competition um, for, for a variety of professions all throughout the United States. Uh, each state holds their own competitions in regions, and then the winners of those competitions eventually go to a national competition. Um, there, a group of IFMA individuals created Facilathon. It's a facil facility uh, uh, competition for students. It's based on uh, mostly common sense kind of reactions to problems that facility management might face in an uh, 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 everyday situation. So for example, um, if, uh, 
you have a, a big event at a hotel and a fire alarm rings. What, what's the first three things that you do? And you know, so the, the students use their own experiences to try to come up with uh, an answer. And so if my Silicon Valley was integral in helping to uh, establish this competition within the state of California, it took three years. California is a huge state. Uh, with six regions. So we had to get all the regions to agree to put on this competition in order to have it happen in the state. And uh, we were successful just a couple of months ago. We were the only competition that Skills USA had in the state of California. Uh, they have something like 100 and, 100 and some, I forget the exact amount, but a lot of competitions. And due to COVID, they had to, uh, you know, shut down for this year. So we asked them if we could do Facilathon online and we did. And uh, so it's a, it's a big deal because this is just gonna help create awareness uh, throughout the state year after year. And when the students be, uh, become intrigued by this profession, they're gonna ask, well, where do I go next? Well, if you live in Northern California, you can go here. If you live in Southern California, you can go here. And by the way, IFMA uh, can help you along the way. So it's, it also creates a awareness for IFMA. And one other program that we just got started uh, Stan, who was speaking earlier from Lockheed Martin, uh, was, was helpful in this, is um, Explorers Program. It's associated with Boy Scouts. It's not just for boys, uh, it, but it's, um, it's uh, uh, from ages of 14 to 20. I'm sorry, I, that's a with, with Title 24 out here in California. I have the <laughs> lights go out. So the um, Explorer Program is from 14 to 20. And they literally explore a, a profession, whether it be police, fire, uh, business. Uh, and so we created one for FM. And again, it's just creating awareness. Uh, when the students become intrigued about the FM profession, we, we tell them where they can go next. Yeah, and we, can I, add, yeah. I was gonna add that we're also wor in, we're working with the Surf Rider Foundation. Uh, we have a Save the Planet, Become a Facility Manager campaign. And when students are bused to beach cleanups, uh, we meet with them and we talk to them about the field of facility management and actually promote the, uh, the California Community College programs there as well. And they learn about how buildings save the ocean, sustainable buildings. I think what we're finding in these programs is it's not that uh, students or individuals are not interested in once they uh, learn about what the queer is, you know, they're all in or they're very interested is the awareness portion. And I want to talk a little bit and then we'll go to a couple other of the questions and kind of go through those because uh, we're starting to accumulate a few questions that I want to ad address. Um, so on the marketing bit, you know, we have to do a little better job. So I think uh, in 2021, we're going to really push and look to K through 12 and some of our activities and build some marketing materials and reach out to the K through 12 with the the ambassador toolkit. I think with those two things, the marketing videos with a couple of great examples of how FM attracts and you know gets K through 12 uh, students interested, and along with their ambassador toolkit would be a great marketing tool for you out there. The other one is to um, reach out to uh, underserved communities. I think we could do a better job in the FM career, and that would be in like some of the uh, lower skilled jobs of those individuals, janitors or facilities maintenance folks that want to uh, increase and better themselves in their career. So this will be, will create a crosswalk and a pathway for them to, you know, they will already have some of the basic or the technical skills, and then we'll help them and show them a career pathway into a, a, a more of a professional facilities management um, career. So Dave, go ahead. I was going to add on to the social justice in FM. We actually are looking in the foundation at, at uh, this just FM movement uh, that we, you know, we, we took a look over the last several years at our work and we've been doing a lot of great work in this area, but we can do more and do better. So we've got a team working on a just FM project. Yes. And uh, Dave Teeswell, thank you, Dave, uh, showed or posted the link to our, ECU sector and we have all of our different initiatives and some great amount of information and resources in there. A uh, question came up from Brian, uh, given the new realities, are the courses well suited to online delivery? I believe so. Mm -hmm. And what we, um, on the technical side, trying to integrate what our sector is doing 
more of the technical side uh, with FM. We went and Brad accompanied me uh, last week in Seattle, Washington to South Seattle College. We found your any building, Office Building USA, and we went through and brought a team of videographers to videotape in 2D, 3D, and in 360, an immersive type of um, video, a learning tool that like when you're buying homes, you, it's a virtual tour. You go through, you walk through the front door and you go into all these areas. We took it another several levels up to where we're opening up pieces of equipment. We're looking at a components. There will be story cards. And, you know, Brad, if you, I'd love to hear, you know, your thoughts of what happened I, last I was week. Just, I was just going to say, Carlos, you forgot the most important part, the drones. We oh, had drones. Amazing. Oh, wow. It, it, it was, it's, it's going to be, an, it's, it's an exciting project. Um, right. They did a very thorough job filming the building. Somebody would be able to, to do a virtual uh, energy audit of that building, just mm -hmm. using the tools that come out of it. So. And we were lucky enough, uh, the building and the training center next to us during COVID had how many, 25, 30? Workers? Somewhere in there working on the masonry trades. They were all social distance, they had their masks, but they were working on concrete, masonry, um, forms, you name it. And we flew the drone over so we could see the different tasks, the different disciplines. And so that's gonna be another part of the training that we show and that we can show the California Community Colleges. Look, in other states, uh, they are able to do this effectively during COVID. And, and Carlos, there's there's just a little taste of the video on the ECU sector LinkedIn page, um, and it's it's kind of a filming of the filming. The uh, the acting talent leaves a little bit to be desired, but um, the there's a little taste of the film on uh, LinkedIn.com slash company slash ECU sector, and I'll go ahead and put that in the uh, chat window. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Let's see. So uh, really finishing up on that question, do we lead nicely into online um, delivery? Absolutely. And, and every, a lot of schools, a lot of individuals, we have a community, a construction community of practice of, of uh, faculty and program directors and instructors out there. Everyone's just kind of collaborating on, you know, how we do this, what's the latest and the greatest, you know, and there's some colleges that you know, a while ago, year, two years ago, they, they saw this coming and most of their instruction is online. So um, let's see, how is enrollment in the California programs? This is from Daryl. What is the approximate split between incumbent workers and entry level um, students? Christian or Diane, what would you say? the mix between incumbent workers and entry level students. I, at CSM, I would say, what do you think, Christian? Uh, you mean of the student body? Yeah. In the class? Uh, so the, our inaugural one was about 25% were already in the facilities profession. It sounds and, like right for Chafee as well. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And almost every single one of them said, I had no idea there were so many opportunities in FM. Mm -hmm. uh, one of those students is, is on the, uh, Isaac is, uh, was one of those students. <clears throat> he was excellent. He was the star student in the class. So that's, uh, he's, his focus is on sustainability. And remember, we have a delivery method with contract ed to where we have and we will and we're continuing to, and we're in discussions you know, with Diane and some different mm -hmm. companies, Diane, that you may want to mention that sure. have reached out to us that want customized FM training like we did at Google. So, you know, COVID took us back a little bit, but, you know, I think it's going to come back uh, very strong, strong demand. And, and I want to add, we did do this customized uh, contract ed with Google and Cushman and Wakefield, which is a major FM outsourcer. And uh, when we started it, we asked them what they wanted to improve productivity wise. And they were able to show that we actually increased their productivity uh, through right. this contract education. So that was pretty awesome. And we hope to do some case studies. And if you would talk about, because for incumbent workers, this is really important. What was the result of their students taking 
the FM course or the contract ed, they all got what? Well, I'm kind of leading you into this. They, they, get, oh, they, raises. they, they get raises and promotions. And I, I forgot what, it was a high percentage. I, I don't remember. Right. It was like 70 or 80%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the other companies we're, we're talking to? So we're talking to Jones Lang LaSalle, which is a global real estate and facility management outsourcing firm, Sidexo, uh, another outsourcing firm, and as well as ABM Industries. And these are some of the companies that are active. I'm a, a AFMA board of trustee that you know, works with Diane and, and as there are other large members, you know, my, my, me, myself, I represent the community colleges, but like JLL and CBRE, you know, they have programs and mandates for hiring and internships that, you know, really provides a nice uh, partnership with industry. It's, it's, a, it's not an instant partnership, but it's a very accessible partnership. Let's see. I don't see any other questions out there. Um, are there any questions you would like to ask uh, either Diane, myself, uh, any of the other regional directors that are dealing with this? Uh, I, you know, after this, a few minutes of the Q&A, I wanted to talk a little bit about facilities maintenance and let you know what is coming down the pike in regards to the technical side that we hope to merge in more with IFMA and the facilities management side. I know it's Friday afternoon. Everyone's ready for uh, to relax or... Carlos, a question came in from Christy Douglas asking, uh, what are the next steps if our campus is interested in adding an FM certificate? Just reach out to, it, depending upon who your regional director is, either myself or you know, Dave Keyswell, Bruce, or the other ones, what, re what region would you be in, Christy? Oh, in yours? Well, between Dave, you know, our team, our team is pretty deep as far as we work very collaboratively uh, between James, Diane, myself, and, mm -hmm. you know, we have great, uh, as Diane mentioned, regional chapters, depending upon what region you're in, we could start a, um, a, a class chapter, a college chapter with the mm -hmm. regional chapter, and then they're off and running. Mm -hmm. And Carlos, Christy is from uh, Moore Park College and, and works in the hospitality sector, so oh. one in a minute about... The other work and the ancillary uh, application post COVID and we're mm -hmm. current and post COVID around the hospitality. Okay. So uh, either James or Diane, please, it, that this is a great discussion how we did a cross sector collaboration where FM is impacting another sector. Yeah, so we've been working with the hospitality sector and creating a joint hospitality and FM degree program. Uh, we're launching the first one at Chafee College, we're uh, uh, almost complete with the curriculum and the students will not only receive the Essentials of Facility Management Certificate when they graduate from this program, but they'll also receive a certificate in hotel operations from that professional association. I think we're gonna we're find- We're really excited about this and we've got um, several colleges uh, interested. I think we're gonna find during this time where there's a big reset on a lot of industries. I mean, it's just so sad to see the retail and hospitality industry devastated, but it's great to, to see that the FM industry is thriving. We're doing well, holding its own, and the trades are doing well. So, you know, there, there will be laterals. There are people that will get into the facilities management or facilities maintenance mm -hmm. trade. Um, and let's see, I wanted to talk, here's a question here. Are there targeted recruiting firms that have taken advantage of the huge need in the yes. FM field? Yes, and those are our Global Workforce Initiative advisor partners, and um, they actually have first crack at the students. They, they uh, want to meet with the students. Right now, we're having virtual career uh, information webinars where they, the students are invited uh, to meet uh, with the recruiters uh, for these firms and learn about all of the different job opportunities and learn how to apply and work the systems within these different organizations. Okay. And uh, Brian had a great point and question here. And you know, it would be great if every community college campus was actively managed as a living laboratory. 
mm -hmm. <clears throat> by FM students and professionals. Uh, so what are the obstacles given the status quo with public colleges, schools, facilities, operations? I can answer to this because I work with a lot of the existing, and as a lot of my, my colleagues do, the regional directors um, and James on a statewide basis, depending upon the college, depending upon the facilities group, they may have a good relationship with creating a uh, campus as a living lab environment. And I think that's what you're alluding to. Chafee's got a great group of people they work with. Uh, you know, there are some colleges that have challenges, but that's the model. And throughout the United States, uh, they have campus as a living lab, great models and working relationships at their campuses. And once a year, Laney College through the National Science Foundation, the Best Center would hold a annual conference um, in Oakland and they would bring individuals from all over the country to talk about their campus as a living lab, um, success stories, how they run their operation, how they integrate with the curriculum and the different programs at their colleges. So um, that is uh, most certainly the model that we would like to see. Uh, Dave or or Bruce or James, I, I would love for you to add to that as far as what you're seeing, what would be uh, advice for those out there that would want to see more of that in their colleges or with their colleges? And I see Rebecca I, on as well for the inland. And, oh, I'm sorry, Rebecca too. Um, yeah, and maybe this goes back to, I don't know if we fully answered Christy's con uh, question in terms of what's what were the next steps if someone's interested on this call? Who do they talk to? So, again, I'm, I'm the state director for energy construction utilities. Again, Dave Teasdale for uh, for the coast. Uh, Bruce Noble is in Los Angeles. Uh, I see um, Rebecca is on from the Inland Empire. Carlos represents the Bay Area. So we've got a pretty good saturation for our sector around the state. You know, and I, you know, I think Diane is a little modest on the partnership and opportunities. I get asked a lot. You know, not all industries and sectors are created equal. If you're interested in, you know, wading into the facility management pool, I will let everyone know on the call that IFMA is one of the gold standard organizations, right? When you start talking about, okay, what are the opportunities? If we want to get involved, are there mentorships? Are there resources? What's the engagement like? Are there jobs? What are the wages, right? And, and every step along the way, student chapter and every other box you want to check is here. Um, I see Jonathan is on from uh, from Fullerton. Um, Greg Andrews on the call as well on myself had a long conversation with Ken Starkman down at Fullerton who was interested in you know and I think he dabbled a little bit in FMA from years ago but it's we had the same conversation that if if you want to start getting into facility management and launch a program or at least explore it you know again, from soup to nuts, the videos, the resources, the jobs, the availability of having industry uh, uh, individuals come in and participate on campus, in the class, provide mentorships, provide internships. It's, it's, it's there and the jobs are there to back it up. So and in this era of, of awareness and outreach, you know, you've got a great partner who can help facilitate all of that. So don't feel like you're on your own because again, FM can be a little nebulous at times um, and its application is across the board. As we mentioned, the uh, hospitality cross-sector program, you know, it, it's one of the advantages of FM as well. Mm -hmm. From casinos to hospitals, um, FM is an, is an application. And so it really does cut across sectors. Um, it's, in a, it's in ECU, quite honestly, because of the, you know, building up uh, uh, the sustainability, energy efficiency, and, you know, building automation aspects of it. But quite frankly, um, again, its application is across all sectors. And so that creates some opportunities in terms of recruitment on campus of what are the most applicable programs to recruit and source from. But uh, uh, I'll leave it at that. But again, kudos to Diane and, and the whole IFMA organization because from the day one, it's been, it's been a great partnership. So with, to answer the question on the next steps, reach out to Dave. Dave will you know, reach out to myself. And I'm the statewide uh, liaison for the FM Talent Pipeline. And really all I do is make sure that you don't have to reinvent the wheel at your particular college. I'll share what other colleges are doing, their curriculum, uh, introduce you to or make you aware of what the local chapters are, who the companies are. And that point, you know, I engage um, our whole team and Diane to say, hey, this college is thinking about this. And then she will know who the resources are, the companies, if there's any internship 
opportunities, who a potential instructor would be at the college. So that's, those are sort of the next steps or the first steps, I should say. And, and I just want to add, it's, um, we've got a lot of eager chapters ready and raring to, to help programs. Um, they really want to bring in the next generation and, and make a difference. And we've got some that are even over eager. So um, yeah, just contact me. I've got all of the connections between the local chapters and, and the organizations that are looking for positions. I wanted to uh, familiarize you and make you aware of a couple of things we're working on. And we alluded to and discussed it a little bit. Um, while facilities management is more of the professional career track, you know, especially if you're on a business degree program, accounting, architecture, you know, you, you, and you're undecided of where you want to go and facilities management is of interest to you, then you have a pathway to get into it and a, a big door with IFMA and the local chapters. Um, but on the other side, in some of the trade schools or some of the trade programs, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, what have you, or uh, what I consider facilities maintenance, we're starting to work on now, and uh, I shared with you what Brad and I were working on um, last week in, in South Seattle College, but what we've done over the last year is convene a group, and there are several of us on this call, David was one of them, where we had subject matter experts and individuals. Uh, we had a focus group from those in Silicon Valley tell us what the major core competencies are in facilities maintenance. Now, in facilities management, and you know, I'll let Diane talk a little bit more about that after I'm finished, but there are not, in, in facilities management, there are 11 core competency, competencies. In facilities maintenance, there are not. But the industry leaders know what those core competencies are. So we had, over a course of several months, we convened a couple of focus groups, you know, emails back and forth, some analysis, and we came up with a set of core competencies and we laid out a training phase, two course training phase, and phase one and phase two for those that are most critical uh, for these technicians when they come out of school. What do employers want? Employers told us that when these employees or students come out of the colleges, they don't have, you know, communication skills. They don't have some of the basic math skills. Uh, you know, they can't, um, you know, do problem solving. So there are a number of different competencies, about seven or eight in this first course that through this uh, 360 2D type of video filming, we can provide this online training uh, to students uh, in one of, you know, it's going to be non-credit first, and then at some point in time here, quickly, we'll make it for credit. But it's roughly, the first course is going to be 27 hours. It'll be ready in, if not late uh, August, um, the target date, uh, early September, and we'll make that available. We're going to do the pilot training at College of San Mateo, and then we will try to scale it, as many co colleges that want it. Um, and then there will also be, oh, let me take a step back. In that course, it's called Facilities Maintenance Techni Technician Training, but it's Job Readiness Awareness Training for students so that this will be a industry recognized certificates that when students come out of some of these technical programs, you know, they're hitting all the boxes that industry and these leaders and companies have said these students require when they come to us. So that'll be great. Um, these two courses, uh, job ready training and energy auditing will familiarize students and also students in the FM facilities management track to really be more aware of and understand what your any building USA will be like from this 360 video and this program. They'll be able to walk through a pro this, this program in this course and when they're done, they will know what a commercial office building looks like, how it's operated, the major components in them and systems, some of the troubleshooting aspects of it. And they can walk away and say, I've conducted a little mini, you know, walkthrough analysis of this uh, commercial building. So we're excited about that. And that's forthcoming in late August, early 
um, September for the first course. The energy auditing course will be towards the end of the year. And then the phase two of the facilities technician training will be in Q1 of 2021, because that'll be a lot more hands-on. We will do another 360 video, video of electricians doing or performing particular tasks, you know, online, you know, uh, plumbers, uh, carpenters, um, welders. We will have certain trades that will be uh, more of an awareness, more of a um, educational video for those to attract them into the trades and get them more familiar with what they need to know in the buildings. Let's see, is there a IFMA chapter in Shasta County? I think the closest one is Sacramento. Sacramento. What do you think, Christian? I think you're right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I would assume it's, yeah, because uh, the Central Valley chapter is kind of on a hiatus right now. Mm -hmm. I think the closest would be Sacramento. Right. Right. So let's see. We covered a lot here. Um, Christian, Diane, you know, the ECU team. What did we miss? Bruce, is Bruce still on? Bruce, do you have any comments about what you've been involved with FM from day one? Do you have any comments you'd like to share or any no, of the other that, ECU team? I, I, actually, you guys have done a great job. Um, I think I'm laying out the uh, outline of what we're doing here. But um, I, I, I don't know. And to go back to uh, uh, Brian's question earlier, we don't know if there's enough bandwidth for every college to have a to have this specific program. Uh, we've done a living lab at at Chapey is the is the outstanding one. It's it just the cooperation of the facilities man management team. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, there's a couple of other colleges that have done it through their primarily through their HVAC uh, programs have been able to uh, uh, break through. Um, and uh, and have a relationship with the facilities management folks, uh, and work around the the liability issues uh, that that are are foremost in the uh, in the minds of the facilities managers, and we we do have models that have worked around that, um, and uh, uh, the like like uh, like. Like uh, James said earlier, the next target we have is uh, is Fullerton. Uh, the Orange County chapter is anxious for us to move forward on that. Los Angeles has West. West is moving their program to credit from non-credit. Um, they had a great success on the first semester. COVID knocked out or knocked down the the uh, second semester. Although there were some diligent students who did finish the program and 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 did uh, are receiving their their uh, uh, certification, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's been a real learning process. Uh, of course, you know uh, Diane and earlier talking about the success that at the Chafee program, uh, and that was fully endorsed by all the way to the top management of IFMA on both the foundation and on the uh, operation side, which is just amazing. Um, there are, I think it was alluded to earlier, there, there are no uh, Cal State programs. There are some programs through the UC, which has very similar, if not exactly the same uh, curriculum outcomes, uh, but they're all through the extension programs at the, um, at those participating colleges. Um, and so we, we haven't done a, a, a feeder analysis yet, but um, uh, we don't even know if it's necessary. Um, uh, but we are looking for to expand our, our footprint. And uh, I'm excited to see that uh, um, more park and canyons and Antelope Valley are, are, are engaged. And um, uh, David and I can work with with those programs to help them move it forward with, of course, with Carlos's help. And uh, uh, if you're interested, just reach out to David or myself. Uh, I guess David has all three of those, but um, 
we do we do know how to do this and it is and all of them all of the programs have been successful um, and and we're, we're really really enthusiastic about this that this aspect of it it's like, like I think has been alluded to earlier it is a, a, a distance ed uh, compatible and we're uh, I, we're really excited what I wanted to point out too, and if, if um, you know, Christian mentioned this in some of the words he communicated as far as this, this career, this profession is, is becoming more technical. It's becoming more, uh, there's so many more components to it. There's uh, not only working with the tenant or the, the customer in the building, you're working with environmental issues, technical, you're working with codes. And, you know, um, I always like to bring Greg in this from a legislative standpoint. Uh, there are so many legislative compliance issues that are not going to go away that continue to increase. And, you know, from a career standpoint, Greg, do you see the legislative requirements either requiring more of a highly skilled FM workforce here. I think the short end, can you hear me okay, Carlos? Yes. Yeah, I think the short answer is yes. Um, from a policy perspective, we're seeing um, a lot of enthusiasm on both sides of the aisle in terms of decarbonizing buildings, transportation, and power sectors. And uh, buildings are roughly 30% of that contribution from a carbon and climate uh, perspective. So my sense is, you know, pandemic aside, obviously there's uh, issues going on and things need to kind of amp up a little bit, but um, there are significant policies and I'll define that as legislation, regulations, codes, executive orders to keep uh, in that direction. And frankly, there are a lot of people working hard right now to leverage those to get people in, you know, back to work and get the economy cranking again. Mm -hmm. um, so there's sort of double alignment there. So like I said, short answer is yes. I don't see those going away in the near future. And if anything, I'll get amped up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments or questions uh, or stories about just the FM career in general? Anyone would like to add? Again, you know, over the last four or five months, from my perspective, having my pulse on industry with, with clients and, and just people out there, colleagues, you know, especially as building engineers, building technicians, uh, facility managers, and both Diane and Christian can, you know, attest to this. Uh, people have been pretty busy. You know, there are some sectors within the ECU sector, you know, such as some of the construction that have taken a little bit of a, you know, uh, modification. But from my perspective, still a lot of trades are really busy. What does, does anyone have any else to add to that? Uh, you know, I think the pandemic has uh, really increased perception of the facility management. And yes, folks are tremendously busy right now. It's, it's, you know, everything from dealing with the cleaning to the space management to getting the buildings back and ready for folks. To, and then just the daily operations and maintenance. So Carlos, you saw the new question that came in. Christy Douglas asked, uh, would current faculty be able to train, be able to train to be qualified to teach FM or would they have to be taught by FM professionals? Go ahead, Diane and Christian. I would say they could. Uh, to teach the essentials of facility management um, doesn't require that you be a certified IFMA instructor. However, to teach the other credentials you you would have to be. So, so I'm not a, a an FM, I'm in construction management. And I initially took the course with an, uh, uh, an IFMA, IFMA instructor to better serve my clients. Most of uh, my construction activities are with uh, uh, FM professionals. So I want to better understand how to serve them. And I took the course at the end of the course, uh, they found out I had some teaching experience in my past. So uh, they said, hey, would you like to uh, uh, help out GWI in uh, recruiting people for the workforce? So uh, I'm living proof that you do not need to be a, an FM to, to teach this class. 
it's um, if you have uh, basic build, building knowledge, you can definitely enhance it with this course and uh, anybody could be good at, at teaching it. Thank you. And yeah. if you have one of the core competencies, you can lay it out the way Christian has and the other instructors to where you bring in uh, subject matter experts and speakers to talk on those particular topics. Yeah, and that's where I can help with the local chapters. But, you know, facility management is such a broad field. Even as a facility manager, I wasn't well versed in every one of the core competencies. I knew when to bring in the vendor, you know, to to be the expert. Uh, uh, one, one last thing I'd like to add. Uh, we created a very robust, we're very involved in this, and it takes a, a lot of people's help. But um, the... Uh, the easiest task in all of it is recruiting FMs to talk about their profession. <laughs> it's the absolute easy. They're actually, I have more people on the waiting list than, than because mm -hmm. it's finally their opportunity to tell yeah. people what they do. <laughs> so that, that's the easiest part. Mm -hmm. New students and incumbent workers, once they get a taste of what this career can be, you know, going into buildings, working with, you know, different companies and organizations just you know it's wide open you can travel you know you're not sedentary in one place you can jump around if you want you could travel the world so let's see is there anything else that i what do you think team did we cover it all pretty well did we miss anything i think we've covered everything i think Again, just going back to one of the questions earlier, if someone's interested on, on this call, again, it'll be the recording will be on our site. If you've got questions, I think we've covered, you know, your regional director or myself or Carlos can, can be a resource to help link, you know, answer questions, link you to the right resource, put you in touch with Diane, whatever the circumstance may be, just explore your thoughts um, on a applicability to your own particular college or programs. We're all, you know, that that's what this was for, to have that initial conversation and, and take it from there, so. You know, James, one of the last things I want to mention, depending upon the location too, um, you will have a workforce, like say in the Inland Empire, uh, where you will have uh, industrial or, um, you know, a certain part of the industry that is really looking for facility manage managers or, or workers or, you know, like Diane in the tech or, you know, different zones and, and locations will have a different need, but there's still a lot of draw and, and desire to hire FMs. All right. Well, I think we'll give everybody 10 minutes back perhaps on their Friday afternoon to make a, a quick start to whatever they were about to do for the weekend. We'll give them 10 minutes of their time back. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much. And I just want to mention there we will send out, um, well, let's see, Brad put on here, all audio and video from today's webinar will be posted on our ECU sector com COVID-19 by early next week. Yep, yep. And thank you again, Diane and Christian. Appreciate your time on a Friday to, to talk Oops. about facility management. You're it's welcome. I'm, I'm sending everyone the link to download the pandemic manual as well. Great. Okay. I just put it in the chat. Well, fabulous. Thank you, Carlos. And I appreciate everybody taking some time on this Friday to be a part of that. Uh, and have a great weekend. Be safe. And we'll, uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you, everyone, for Thank joining you. in. Thank you, James. Thanks, everybody. Diane and Christian. Bye-bye.